In this video, we're going to take a look at Robert Oster's Hippo Purple. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. This gave much more tone variation by pen than I expected. I really, for some reason, was expecting this to be a much more consistent performer. And that's because this ink has been around for quite a while, and I don't remember hearing anything about it being so wildly different from pen to pen. From wet pens, the tone gets so dark it has just kind of no flavor, I guess you could call it. Anything that you would think about for this ink that would make you really want it in its darker tone doesn't make you want it. All the specialness is lost. Now, it does shade, and when it does shade, it does it sparingly, like it's been reserved for a special event, and then it's served to appreciative audiences. And I'm really liking the way that the shading comes through in, it's not always screaming, it's very subtle, but can be appreciated when it's there. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Twisby Mini with a fine nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. The fine has no feather, no spread. It's giving some shading, and if you look at like, it's a bit darker a word than the word can directly above it, which is pretty nice in that, but if you look at the word atmosphere, you see a lot of dark to light to dark. The medium is much darker than the fine, with no feather, no spread, no, sh no shading. Excuse me. It's just there to me. It's a darker purple that leans towards a magenta, and I'm really not liking it. Now, from the music nib, it's much lighter than the medium, a tad bit lighter, or very close, but a tad bit lighter than the fine. It has no feather, no spread, great shading throughout. If you look at proof where it starts dark, gets light, and gets dark again, again, ingenious goes dark to light to dark to light. It's beautiful here. Looking at the back of the page, we get no ghosting, no bleed through. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with
a name assigned singularity with a fine nib. A Kaweco Sport with a medium nib. A Tasha Spectrum with a music nib. The next writing sample is done on Leustrom 1917 paper. Looking at the fine, we get no feather, no spread. We get a little bit of shading. If you look at the word another, it starts lighter and gets darker to lighter again. The than goes from lighter to darker. Even the letter N goes lighter to darker. It is very nice in here. It's reserved in its approach to giving that shading. The medium is much darker than the fine with no feather, no spread, no shading. It's just there. And I just don't like the tone as we see it here. Now, the stub is much lighter than the medium, a tad bit lighter than the fine, with no feather, no spread, a very nice shading. Look at the factorial symbol compared to the N. That N goes light to dark with a very dark factorial symbol. Where reed goes lighter to darker, aloud goes light to dark to light to dark. Nice. I really like how it gets presented here. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done on moleskin paper. Looking at the fine, we get no feather and no spread. We still get shading. Now, I say still get shading, but the most amazing thing is this paper doesn't tend to offer that shading up very often. And here it does, but only in a few spots, like the P and the E in prime, or the H in have, or the D in divided. I do like how it's showing with this sparse use of its shading. It's generally, I would prefer more, but I think here it's working really well. Now the medium is much darker than the fine with no feather, no spread. We actually do see some shading in the word multiplying starts lighter and gets darker and the word and goes lighter to darker. So it does show itself here, which very surprised. Now, the music nib is the same tone as the fine, with no feather, no spread, really nice shading throughout all of this writing. Can't have any complaints there.
When we look at the back of the page, we get almost no ghosting and no bleed through whatsoever. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a composition notebook. The fine has no feather, no spread, almost no shade at all, but again, much more about this paper. When you see the word either, it goes lighter to darker to lighter again. Itself, the T gets much darker than gets light to dark to light again. So there is some, certainly less than we've seen with the other papers. Medium, darker than the fine with no feather, no spread, some shading, look at the word greater where it starts light, gets dark and gets light again. Not too bad here. I do think this tone, while I haven't appreciated it on other papers, I like the tone here. It's just a little bit different enough that it's into that pleasant range where it was before, just over that line. The stub has no feather, no spread, great shading, the best shading we're seeing here, without a doubt. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we do get some minor ghosting and no bleeding. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Grape. Here is Caveco Summer Purple. Here is Monteverde Purple Rain. Here is Robert Oster Charcoal. The next writing sample is done in a Mead Five Star Notebook. The fine has no feather, no spread, no real shading. Um, I want to say there's a darker word, and that's the word the on the top line. But other than that, this is fairly uniform in its performance. The paper's really holding the ink back here. Now the medium has no feathering and no spread again, so outstanding. Now it has no shading, but we haven't seen a ton of shading on the medium from this ink. The stub is lighter than the medium and a little bit darker than the fine. It has no feather, no spread, 
I'm gonna say there are a couple spots of shading, like you see the dot of the I of irrational, or the Y of infinity, or the E of R. So there are a few spots that it is showing up, which is kind of surprising. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we get ghosting, as you would expect, a lot less bleed through here than we've seen with other papers, as in, it's not bleeding through and, uh, or compared to other inks. It's not bleeding through, but it's not getting as deep into the page either. So this is especially good if you can get a hold of it with this cheap paper. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a black shimmering ink by Nemesign, Colsac Nebula Twinkle. Here's a blue-black ink by Noodler's Midnight Blue. Here is a green ink by KWZ, their Iron Gall Green Number 2. Here's a turquoise ink by Noodler's, their Navajo Turquoise. If you'd prefer different complement colors, then there's links to those different playlists down in the description. Or you can click on my face. That'll take you to my channel page. Then click on the playlist tab. Scrolling down, you'll be able to see all of the playlists that are here on the channel. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. The fine has a tiny lit, little bit of spread. There is tiny feathers I see in Pythagoras. I see tiny feathers in Upset and in Infinite. But the tiny feathers aren't anything that, in this case, are any kind of a problem. It has no shading, and it doesn't really spread here. That is about how this pen writes, which is really shocking. The medium is darker than the fine. There is the tiniest bit of spread. That is a little bit thicker a line than I've gotten on other papers, but this is really tremendous performance here. We have tiny feathering all over it that gives it the slightest blurry look, and I still don't see this being something that would stop someone from using it on this paper. No shading. The music nib is lighter than the medium. It's about the same tone as, well, maybe a little lighter than the fine with a lot of feathering. All tiny feathering, but tons of it all over it. I don't know that there's a spot without a feather. It has a little bit of spread, but again, this amount of spread is very little at all. When we open it up, I circled the two spots where it touched the page underneath. So it did touch the next page, but not something that would destroy the next page for you. It has a lot of ghosting, which is normal for this paper, and it does bleed much heavier in here, in fact, touching the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think is gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I've already stated that I don't like this from wet pens, as the tone is lackluster when it comes out from there. It's not for me. Not that it's bad in and of itself. Definitely not my tone. I go with a medium to dry fine for the best tone from this ink. But if what I want is a good tone and the best shading, then... I think a dry stub is the best way to go. Thinking about how that music nib performed, you're gonna get your most shading and again, a pleasant tone. Although, I probably go with the fine here. Thanks for watching.